Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this show, we talk about the most important thing to look for when buying supplements. And no, it's not the cheapest price. Later in the show, we talk about our friend, the Liver King, his big lie, and what we think about it. In the second half of the show, the guys coach three live callers on questions such as, my workout is making me feel beat up. What should I do about it? What is the best way for me to learn how to program workouts for my clients? And how can I choose the best fitness goal for me as the circumstances of my life change? Finally, if you've been watching the show for a while and you haven't subscribed to Mind Pump Clips, what are you waiting for? Go over there and subscribe. All right, enjoy the show. All right, check this out. When you buy supplements, one thing is more important than all the other things. One factor you should pay attention to the most. Does this supplement company provide third-party testing? Is it regulated through a third-party company? If you don't have that, the odds are, it's like a 50-50 chance, the supplement doesn't have what it says it has in it, or it may have heavy metals or toxicities or other crap. By the way, this isn't just me saying this. Study after study on supplements shows this, improves this. Supplement companies cannot be trusted unless they provide testing. All right. Do you, you think it's the most important? It is. Because if you look at the data, whenever they do studies on supplements, I'll, I'll, I'll mention two of them. There was one done a long time ago on protein powders and heavy metal toxicity. And it was like seven out of 10 of them had... Uh, potentially toxic levels of heavy metals yeah. in their product. Then there was another uh, study where they took, I think it was 10 or 12 bottles, random bottles of supplements at, I think it was Walmart or somewhere. And it was like nine of them either didn't have what they said they had in them, didn't have as much as what they said, or had other undisclosed random- Spiked aminos weird in there. Ingredients. And it's like every single time they do a study like this, it's not like- First of all, 10% would be terrible. Imagine any other market where 10% of the products you're going to get are lying to you. It's like, it's always like 50% or more. So it's like, it's rampant. So regardless of all the other things you need to look for in supplements, and I'm not saying there aren't other factors that are important, but this has got to be one of the most important for sure, because the odds that you're getting something that's got stuff that's bad for you, doesn't have what it says in it, is it's basically the odds you're getting ripped off are pretty damn high. So look for that third-party testing. Would you say as a rule of thumb that it is dangerous then to buy the cheapest uh, supplement? You know- Because uh, because of the, the third-party testing, like there's no way- I would be more skeptical for sure. Yeah. There's no way if you were doing third-party testing that you would be able to out-compete the people that are not. Yeah, because- So like if you take a product like protein, creatine, some of these basic branched-chain amino acids, whatever- and you are shopping on Amazon and you find the cheapest one, the likelihood that they're third party tested, I would say is probably not likely, right? Yeah, there's this false um, perception that the supplement companies have kind of created and it's par partially driven by consumers. And that is that product A is exactly like product B and the only difference is the price, yeah. right? So it's like, it's not like buying electronics. Like if I get an iPhone at this place or an iPhone at that place, they're identical. It's the same model, same everything. Then I'm just going to look at the price because what's the difference, right? And supplement companies promote this by saying like, we also are whey protein or our pre-workout also has these same ingredients or we also sell this, you know, medicinal mushroom mix or creatine or whatever. But Look how much cheaper our product is. Look at the servings. Look at the price per serving. So why don't you just go with us? That's that's um, so it's quite false because you're right. Getting this testing, like if a company wants to have third party testing that says that certifies that it is indeed that it is indeed free from synthetic pesticides. So it says organic, but here's the testing that shows that it for sure is organic. Here's the testing that shows that it's glyphosate residue free, which is a whole mm -hmm. other level of testing, or here's the testing that says that our products are free from impurities or heavy metals, which seem to be pretty prevalent. That costs money to do that kind of stuff, to test these batches. So it's probably going to, it definitely will make your product more expensive. Now, would you say in terms of like a quick cross reference of, uh, these companies like examine.com, is that like your best bet in terms of like being able to see whether or not they did the testing and, um, you do know, they do that on there? No, I don't think they so. Don't I think, do it on there. No, examine.com is a great website, by the way, if you haven't, if people watching haven't been there, but examine.com looks at 
examines studies um, based off of ingredients, but it doesn't say this supplement company. But the supplement company itself should provide this. Oh, they will if they're yeah. if they're third third party tested. They're doing any of the other tests. They'll they'll, they'll I mean, usually market it on the that label. Way, yeah, because yeah. it's on the expensive. label on the website. Yeah. They'll, they'll, and, and if not, you can contact them, send them an email, and, and say, "Hey, them. who tests? You know, what what regulatory agency? What private agency regulates your product?" I mean, isn't that part of the reason why Organifi is on the higher end as far as because it's they're doing multiple like third party tests, right? So you have the regular third party test to to fact it's organic, check. yeah. Then is glyphosate residue free? Then they test for heavy metals and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's going to make something more expensive because, by the way, I'm not advocating for government regulation. I think that's, you know, because sometimes people think that the alternative means perfect. No, listen, this is the best way to do it. If you're yes. a consumer and you don't care and you're willing to take the chance and, you know, to save $5 on a product uh, that that's in there in a, in a super risky, unregulated market like supplements, then by all means, go for it. Or you're willing to spend the extra five bucks to make sure that you're getting a great product. Then let, Dude, the, you know how let many, the market speak. Do you know there was another study where they took um, libido enhancing pills or you know whatever, whatever quote unquote boner pills, right? That help you with your erection. And on the bottles would be like, oh, this has these herbs in it. And then they tested them. Do you know how many of them had Just had Viagra in it? Like medications had actual <laughs> pharmaceutical medications in the pills. Yeah. And people didn't even know about it. Now, someone may be thinking, well, that whatever, who cares about that? No, no, no. Oh. Those medications could, they could have interactions with other things that you're taking, other medications. It could mm -hmm. cause problems. Like you want to know what you're taking says that, you know, has what it says that it has, especially if it's something you take on a daily basis. Like we're talking about heavy metals. If you take a, you know, one or two scoops of protein powder, you know, five days a week, let's say, and it's got higher levels of mercury or lead in it than it's supposed to, you might not notice for a little while. But then all of a sudden, you know, after a year or two of supplementing with it, you're getting anxious or you feel like shit and you don't know what's going on. You go to the doctor and, you know, a doctor isn't going to right out the gates do a heavy metal test on you. They just typically don't do that. So now you're going to the doctor, you're like, I'm anxious, I don't feel good. They're like, okay. Let's put you on an anti-anxiety medication or let's put you on an antidepressant. And you kind of feel better because you're treating a symptom, but you're and you're still taking this protein. Wasn't and there you're a, still building up this this toxic levels? Like wasn't there a pre-workout that got busted and popped for the uh like speed being in there for like the last Yeah, there was there was like, there was some, some <laughs> there's a few of these. Yeah. I know what's funny about that is there's some people who are like, ooh, I want it more because Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, you know. But it I mean, I'm telling you, when you look at the whole supplement market, and there's a lot of factors to consider. There's a lot of supplements out there that do nothing, even if they they have what they say they have, it's like a waste of time. But, you know, every single time, I'm, it's like, I remember the first time I saw this, I was shocked. I'm like, oh my God, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. And then another study came out, another study came out, another study came out. And then, then it was, I don't remember what company it was that got busted for amino acid spiking because they said that there was 30 grams of protein per scoop, but it was actually 15 or something like that. Now knowing what just you, more and more, I'm like, oh my God, this is super rampant. Knowing what you know about supplements today, do you think that if you had all that same knowledge and wisdom if you went back to your you know 15 16 year old self do you think you would have not spent the money on supplements totally you, you would i i would have i would have been more careful and i would have spent it on stuff that was more efficacious i you know as a kid i just fell for every single promise every single you know uh yeah. ad that i read um and the more it looked like it could like pack muscle on I, mean, I bought so much crap oh i thought multivitamins did a lot for you because the whole colgan yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> take your vitamins <laughs> That's how he got so massive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's obvious. You like, know what? You bring up a really good point. Yeah. And that is that, um, and we just, you know, it's funny. It's With like- power association? Yeah, like um, if you talk to somebody and you say, hey, if a super ripped looking or, you know, beautiful looking person who is obviously either genetically gifted, like crazy genetically gifted or on tons of performance enhancing drugs or whatever- if that person is telling you to take this because that's the way that's why they look the way they do, like take our vitamin C supplement and then you'll get 21 inch arms like me. Everybody's gonna be like, yeah, that's full of crap. And yet it's what sell products. Yeah. It consistently sells products. Not so I you know, I tell people all the time, like, don't base your judgment because the person selling it to you looks super crazy shredded or jacked like that's not really a good way to the judge. crazy yeah. part about it that's i think that's interesting about human psychology is the fact that you could still know all that and yet still yep. get yeah. rationally logically like your your brain like processes Dude. it like I mean, there's no way but also 
dude looks impressive. Well, look what look what I think. I mean, I predict is going to happen with the Liver King. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Here's the giveaway for today's episode: Maps Anabolic. This is the Maps program that started it all. You can win it for free, but here's how you enter to win. Leave a comment below the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. Do all those things. And then if we like your comment, we'll declare you the winner in the comment section of this video. Nowhere else. And that's how you'll know you won Maps Anabolic. Uh, we also have a sale going on right now. It's the at-home holiday bundle. So we took our best at-home workout programs, put them together, and discounted them massively. So check this out. Maps Anywhere, Maps Suspension, Maps Prime, and the No BS six-pack formula all together, which normally would retail for $338. You can get all of them for $99.99 uh, right now for the at-home holiday bundle. If you're interested, you want to sign up, click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. You have somebody who, you know, blatantly- I was shocked when that came out, let me tell you. Stupid. <laughs> None of us were, by the no. way. The reason why we didn't talk about it very much is because it's just like, come on, like, you know? Duh. But the part, see, now the part that I think is so interesting or that, that I do think is fascinating to talk about is that he's on him, he blatantly lied tons of times, and I still think that he is going to massively benefit financially. Still going forward. Now, do you think he's going to... Oh, so you think hmm. it's not going to hurt him at all? Oh, no, I absolutely will. But if you were to go back... Okay, so... So, so his trajectory is going to not be like... Okay, what, in what 2000... And these are these are uh, just made up numbers. I don't know. His, his, I don't have his exact P&Ls and, and no, but I know that he has touted that he makes over $100 million a year in supplements. Although I will say this. Do you think he might have been lying about, about how, many, how many millions of dollars he was making? I definitely think he's lying when he says that his new persona and character has minimally to not affected his business at all. That's full of shit. Okay. Cause he said that, you know, but that, what right? if his numbers are crap? What, what who, do you believe about him and what he says? Yeah. yeah you're right. Making up you know? the numbers because a hundred million dollars. You're right. Well, like, that's, ir sell? that's irrelevant to my point. Sure. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's, let's just assume. Yeah. Like, so that's irrelevant to my point that I'm making. So let's say it, it doesn't matter if it's 50, a hundred, sure. 10, it doesn't matter what it is. My point is that, he increased his percentage of revenue by so much by becoming this character. Okay, so oh, let's, for sure. So yeah. I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it. it he he 300 per, you know 300 percent increase in revenues by becoming the Liver King. So even let's say he had lots of success even before. Then he becomes this character who goes around lying and does all this these gimmicks to get all this attention. And I'm gonna say his product is now selling 300 percent plus more. I don't care what he says. It, I'm sure it is more since he's created this character and i absolutely think he'll take a hit but the hit's going to look like 30 uh, percent you take 30 so percent you're saying a, overall so overall it was a it was yeah. a, in terms of the the revenue it was positive not to mention something about us we we mm. love redemption stories and so the he'll take an initial 30 percent hit of people that will that will feel you know lied to and yeah. cheated but there's, yeah. and mad and they're and they'll stomp their feet and they'll yeah. go buy from somebody else that they get sold to, and then they'll and then he'll, they'll never get those customers again. But then there's a percentage of people one who won't give a fuck, and then two there's a percentage of people that and I see it if you actually look at his apology on YouTube that say I like him even more now. Yeah, they like him more now. So, and I think he knew. The entire time, yeah. It's I crazy think he went. I think he went into it when you read the emails that he, the correspondence back and forth with the guy that he was inquiring. By the way, about, you know that the guy there's nothing authentic about any of the redemptive side of it, though. Yeah. Like that's the thing. It's like it. I just look at it as a reflection of where we are as society. Well, I mean, I, I agree, Justin. There's no, there's there's the same thing. But for I agree every, that every we, Marvel story and made up thing yeah. we watch on television, yet we all line up, you know, to sit down did and you, watch all this. Did stuff. you um? Did you see that the person the coach or whatever that that email came from came out and said it was me no i know that i saw so i got sucked in. i cannot believe that i watched an hour of this but i was i was so intrigued by the story uh from um what's derek's last name from more plates more dates yeah whatever his last name is yeah yeah um johnston or something like that no it's no. not derek johnston. <laughs> you're just gonna make <laughs> just it last last just a common name <laughs> smith <laughs> he puts out really good content and he, he he did like a one hour video on like he broke down every email but he had it all blank he had the 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 he protected the name of the actual yeah. coach so you're saying the coach that came guy full. came out oh i didn't know that so first of all what makes me laugh is Can you find this, it for me doug i didn't know that so what's funny about this is this space 
Yeah. Why does everybody have a weird name? So we got Liver King, and then the coach <laughs> that he wrote to, his name is Vigorous Steve. <laughs> okay. No, it isn't. What? I swear to God. Wow. Doug, look up vigorous Steve Ling 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 uh, You got Liberty. Joey Schwoll and then what was the other Dev Come Physique on, man. We need names. We fucked up. We didn't Why do we have nicknames? We're super yeah. lame. Uh, we're, super, we're so lame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no wonder we're not as popular. I'll be Sports Ball Sal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you, what are you, Moody Adam. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Casey Justin. Those are cool names. Yeah. Uh huh. Did you? That's because we're making fun of the whole did thing. Did you find this guy, Doug? Yeah, I'm seeing he has like a, a YouTube channel. He does. Like. He's actually a really smart guy. He talks about I imagine he's, enhancing drugs. Did you? And, did you? Okay, so did you know? I, I think this is really funny because uh, you know more plates, more dates. Derek right was has been following this whole thing, and he he's yeah. been reporting on Liver King since the beginning of him, yeah. and, and and like because everyone wanted to know because he talks so much. God, about I hate the gossip side of fitness. I really do. Yeah, this is I, so painful to talk about. It, it really is like a who gives a fuck kind of a thing, but there's. <laughs> Yeah, there's totally. just, I mean, he's making money hand over fist. And so you kind of have to acknowledge it. Well, yeah. the, the only reason why, I mean, cause we didn't talk about it before. The only reason why I talk about it now is because we have enough people that actually want to hear our opinion. It, or yeah, what we think about true. it. It's like, uh, we are not the type to, to jump on the bandwagon of like, you know, this title is not who's be, natty or not, you know, I know. No, so let me tell you another annoying. thing that I like, I mean, we, I, I hesitated to even bring it up, uh, you know, for as long as I did, because, what also annoys me is, and we have friends in the space that do this, is that as he's going viral and trending, everybody is making videos. It's the freaking tabloid him. side of fitness. It's yeah, so annoying. Sure. It helps yeah. nobody. And so I don't, I don't like that. So I mean, this is the guy right here. That's vigorous Steve right there. Yeah. So he's uh, and he the guy. I mean, the guy is really smart. I've seen some of his and stuff. Vigorous. Really, really smart. <laughs> I don't know why they call him vigorous Steve. It's kind of cracks me up. Interesting adjective. But uh, yeah, I hate this. So, so I mean, I guess we could tell people like when when Liver King was making his rounds on every podcast before this all came out, like we had opportunities to go after him and I go after get him, him on he, our show. Yeah, he, they reached out. And he said no. We're like, yeah, no. It's no. so dumb. It's just a sideshow. I hate the side of fitness. I hate the caricatures. I hate the gossip side of fitness. Now, that being said, this helps no one. It's garbage. And, you know, I want the consumers, I, I'm trying to get consumers to stop judging a product because they have someone that looks a particular way saying, this is great, because that's that's almost never the case. It's almost never the case that that's actually what's happening. Liver King obviously doesn't look the way he does because he takes desiccated liver tablets or no. whatever else supplement. I mean, but it's been, the, it's been the formula since the beginning of yeah. time. I mean, when you look at every, you look at all the biggest, most popular bodybuilding magazines yeah. and, you know, most of the pro bodybuilders make a majority of their money peddling supplements that many of them don't even take. No. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're almost, you, you, you'll go through a muscle and fitness magazine. I guarantee you'll see at least a handful of branch chain amino acids with, you know, paired with you, Mr. I Olympia. Just, yeah. I think it just reminds us it's never going to go away. Like, yeah. And especially with like the. Um, the waist trainers and, and uh, the pills, the diet pills and like all these things that they're just always going to resurface. And, and it's like a cyclical thing. Like somebody else will like pedal it in a new way uh, and, and pretend that uh, this is all the result of like some magic. It, what is it about us that wants? That? Well, let me ask you guys this. So, cause this, I'll tell you what the most powerful uh, I guess selling or the most powerful tactic that I encounter by far is a personal anecdote. If Justin comes to me and says, Hey, I took, you know, bull testicle extract and bro, I got so strong on it. And I yeah. know that that is g garbage. I'm going to be very, very compelled to try it because it mm. was Justin. Cause I know Justin. So that's super powerful. Mm, the social element of it. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you know the person, Yeah. then there's the anecdote online. That's obviously very powerful. There's a reason why Mind Pump has almost never, I don't even think we've ever done before and after pictures of, we got a lot of before and after pictures. We got lots of people who followed our programs and have transformed their bodies, but we know that it will kind of, I guess what it perpetuates and what it pushes. And it also feeds into the part of the fitness space that we hate part of it, which is the, you know, Hey, look at this guy. That's, this is why you should buy this product, but it's very effective. It sells yep. uh, like crazy. So now I'll tell you what, when I was a kid, um, I quickly moved from the buff guys telling me to take this to, and they still would sell me this way because it wasn't a real scientific study, but there were, there were ads where they pretended to be scientific. Mm -hmm. This is what, how this protein <laughs> breaks down. In the, and then I would get sold on something uh -huh. like that. But 
yeah, I wish people would just, I wish consumers would change a little bit because then this would, uh, Liver King wouldn't exist if everybody saw him for what he was, which is just- The interesting part is that, you know, I don't know what his exact numbers were, but he was successful before all this. I mean, he already had multiple companies that Did were- he? Yeah, hmm. I, I don't know to what level. I mean, obviously he claims that it was making a, a lot more, but I mean, he, he had enough to afford a huge ranch mm -hmm. and a lifestyle where he could come and go as he want. I mean, he's got a nice place. So he, he wasn't broke by any means. I mean, talk about, though, the level of greed that you have to have to have already created that kind of success, probably doing it the right way. Imagine being point. his kids. You know what I mean? Like, oh, there's dad. He's pooping in the backyard again. And, you know, <laughs> he said he would do that. You, you ever yeah. hear talk about that? Uh -huh. oh, and then he would daddy. wipe. Yeah. Wearing a lion's mane around his head and no okay. shirt all the time, picking me up from school. Yeah. <laughs> you imagine that? <laughs> that would drive me That's crazy. my dad. Yeah. You imagine if he was your neighbor? Yeah. Like, oh, God. There uh, he is again. He's so... It's, oh, it's, it's you so know, annoying. when we, we did the live event and, and people were talking to me about, uh, our business and the things that, you know, that we all do, you know, how, like each one of us outside of the podcast, what we like and what we don't like. And I tell you, uh, still to this day, my least favorite thing to do is to talk to the camera, whether it be through Instagram stories or through YouTube, um, and to in like to pretend like I'm talking to millions of people when I'm only talking to a single you know video kid standing across from me, and the part that I find so difficult is if you've done this uh, enough, you quickly realize that the more animated, the more you project and mm -hmm. and act, the more uh, unnatural you act. Yeah, the more it's it's received uh, on the other side. I know on yeah. the other side, and 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 it I've always seen, plays better when you're like when you overly it, it does present yourself. It re it really does. People remember you, and it sucks because it's so inauthentic. And you you know being your authentic self in front of the camera yeah. like that, it just is not entertaining, and, and it doesn't get eyeballs, and it right. doesn't. And so it's always been that way. It's right? been, I've had so much resistance doing that because of that, and so because I know that firsthand, when I see any of these characters that are viral that have millions of followers because of this this persona, I instantly know that like either one this per this person can't be like this. Mm -hmm. They're not like that all the time. And if they are, they're stuck in that character, i.e. like Elliot Holtz and people like that that we've met that couldn't turn it off, right? It couldn't be normal. It's like, dude, you're not yeah, recording a YouTube we, video. We interviewed him and, and then the, 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 we were done with the podcast and he kept Still talking, talking that like that. Yeah. You know, this is why I do what I'm like. So I actually, off, so I, in, I now, we, we turned down originally Liver King, but I actually reached out to him just recently and invited him on because I want to fucking see if he does that. And if mm. he does that, I'm going to call his shit out on, on, on the podcast because that, that's what annoys me. It's like, I, I, I'd have more respect if you act normal and you tell me like, yeah, this is a complete character. Yeah, like if he, I've like, created this person. Like when he, like he puts on the like lion's man, then he becomes a character, but he takes it off. He's like, Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? Right. Yeah. You know, my name is John Smith or whatever his name is, you know? That I would have way more respect. Uh, yeah, I'd have way more respect if we could have a, a real conversation and you and you admit that like, yeah, this is a persona, this is a character. Yes, I'm acting. I'm just, no, I'm not like this. Even if there are some truths, right? I'm sure the guy does. You know what's funny about this is that I think, you know who proved that you can do that? Uh, WW, back used to be called WWF and now it's WWE wrestlers. Back in the 80s, there was, everybody speculated that wrestling was quote unquote fake in the sense that it was scripted, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody speculated. And then it came out that it was indeed uh, scripted. In fact, um, God, what was his name? There was, a, there was a reporter. I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now, but he actually went backstage. Jimmy Hart? No, it was a, what? Do you remember, oh, no. remember who he was? I do <laughs> who he was. John He's Stossel. A, oh. Doug, maybe you can look this up on YouTube. John Stossel gets slapped by a pro wrestler. He went backstage. This was in the 90s, early 90s. This is when he was like a reporter. And he goes up to, I don't remember who it was. It was big wrestler. Big he was wrestler. like a real reporter. He's not a- He's a real reporter. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, hey, you know, people are saying wrestling fake. It's fake. It's totally fake. And then the, the wrestler looked at him and he goes, is this fake? And he fucking smacks him hard, <laughs> knocks him on the ground. And John Stossel's like, ah. Oh. And apparently he, he, got, he suffered like permanent ear damage. <laughs> <laughs> But, oh, no, that's but not it, fake. anyway, my point is it came out that it was scripted. It stopped being kind of an open secret. 
and they didn't lose sales. Their tickets still crushed. They still, by the way, it's scripted, but they're still hitting each other. They're still jumping off shit and landing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my point is, I like, like I bet, like Juju well, Mufu came on our podcast. They just lean more into the entertainment side of it. Yeah, remember Juju Mufu on the sports. Me, Juju Mufu came on our podcast. He was like a normal dude. That's why we liked him. Yeah. yeah, we liked him because he's like this. He wasn't like engineer, engineer, he's engineer, a perfect engineer, version of that. nerdy dude yeah, yeah. who is like totally normal, and then he puts on this character when he gets on well, he's his genuinely excited to uh do these crazy feats right like he's like um you know he he gets like pumped up about like you know setting it up and like shooting it and and trying like to to, to push himself to do all these like crazy like superhuman things is who's that, that wrestler that's that ted dibiase no no is that the million dollar man? no 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 doug could you you couldn't find it on uh on youtube i'm looking for it that that is uh oh the wrestler's name it's uh is it ted no it's not it's, yeah it's bigger than ted it's not Doc, the million dollar man dr d david schultz let's yeah is anyway. that right okay well here did you i mean okay so along these lines though sal like so okay so like what do you think of somebody like the rock right you know, oh like, that he changed his name to the rock well no just no just to, okay so he's loved by so many people that I, I mean i believe he has a chance to run for president one at one point but i also believe that that dude is in character still mm -hmm. oh for well, sure of course for sure he acts like it he and, totally acts like it and so that like we just think but about I mean, there's I mean, that's millions of people that are in love with him as a person that we would probably vote him into presidency that's and a, we will. Yeah, yeah. But, but hold okay. on. You know, let me tell you why that's not a good com comparison mm. because what do you mean? Acting to politics, the same shit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. All politicians are acting. You know True. what I mean? They're I mean, all, yeah, no, that's a, that's hey, a good, watch. That's a good it's point. David Schultz. Uh, so David Schultz, was I don't remember big, who that guy was. He was a big, uh, what was his, what was his name in the, uh, that guy right oh, there. Yeah. Now watch this. I remember. He's like, this. does this? I, re I remember this. Do you remember? Like, I remember. This. Boom! Look at Max's ass on the ground, dude. I remember. And totally, he does it again. Watch. Does this look fake? Kachow on the ground again. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he runs Is that away. fake? He runs away. <laughs> I wonder how much he was sued for that. A yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah. A lot. Because he, I guess he'd suffered from permanent like. Because I remember reading those. Every stories. reporter had like the best mustache back then. You know, so, yeah, yeah, they did. We had somebody at our event that had a hell of a good stash like that. Did you see yeah. him? Oh yeah, I made sure I commented on it. If your mustache covers your lip, yeah. like you should get a prize. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. You have <laughs> that capacity. I could, I could do that. Yeah, yeah you yeah. got a, you got good mustache genetics. Oh, that boy, <laughs> that's it. And I, I don't. My mustache naturally separates. In you the look middle, like so Luigi looks, or looks Hitler. Yeah, why you? Whoa, <laughs> it's like opposite. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, often I can't do that. Bro, you hey, the little thing in the middle. He said, hey, he said Luigi. How hey, racist is that? Yeah, speaking of Hitler, I, 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 oh Lord, Kanye. I tried to defend you for a while there. <laughs> Just, hey, he's, dude, he's lost it. Oh, he literally man, lost dude. his mind. Do you remember he's what I said? Rocker. Remember what I said about him being in a in a in a manic state? It's he's clearly manic. Oh, I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't. Well, okay, so uh, I know there's a conspiracy. And this is not theory, defending Justin, him. This way. is not defending him. Yeah, but maybe he's not manic. Maybe he no, is. He's manic. Well, so the other the other theory is that I'm no he is just saying yeah, outlandish MK shit to try and get attention. Like I mean, that that intentionally saying outlandish shit because it's what's going viral. Bro, you give celebrities so much credit every time they do something stupid. You're always like, they're doing it to get famous or make more money. I don't. Think I think they're crazy. Sometimes. I don't think it's giving them credit. I think they're so narcissistic. They know how to play the game better than anybody. Uh, Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's not a bad point. Yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Kanye does them. fall in that category. Huh? Was, he is a bit narcissistic. Isn't he? Oh my god! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doesn't he call himself? Like, yeah, Jesus. Jesus? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fucking yes, bro. Jesus. Yes. They, I mean, I really believe. I mean, you want to talk about people that have been smelling their farts the most? Like nobody does that more than celebrities do, and. If you're really good and you're at the top, you know how to play the game. Yeah, well, he was diagnosed with some mental disorders before that was disclosed, and he does exhibit. So I'm not a doctor. He made he made he, he made Alex Jones look nervous, dude. Bro, that was, how do you do that? That was hilarious. How do you make Alex Jones Alex Jones had to come us. back and be like like <laughs> like condemn basically everything he got went on his show to talk yeah. about? Well, he was on the show. He's and like, he I say some crazy conspiracy yeah, shit, like, but nothing like this that. is ridiculous. So let me ask you guys this. Let's let's create a conspiracy theory right now, right? So Kanye already a little off before. I'm not talking about right now. Now he went mm. full. He went all the way on the deep end. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. But always a little off, right? 
But maybe is he, he a plant? Was, maybe he was saying some shit that was a little bit like it was kind of like irking, you know, the people, mm. the, the puppeteers, pu people pulling the strings. Yeah. yeah. And someone like that, it's not hard to push him over the edge a little bit, right? It's not hard to like when he goes to pick up his medications, give him the wrong medication, <laughs> or send him just keep messing with him subliminal yeah. messages, or just press him because you know he's gonna break. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what if that's what's going on, Justin? Well, I mean, look, the last thing I dropped about the video games, like look how easy it is for them to just put uh, those subliminal messaging and and things within what you're watching. Totally. It's now, so what, if, what if he what if he's just trying to get as much crazy attention so he can bring light to some other crazy shit? Like what's going on with Balenciaga? Mm, what if you don't like, need to bring light to that? It came out. Yeah, it didn't come out if it wasn't for him. What do you mean the ads? You're talking about everything else he said, bro. That nobody was nobody was barking and talking about that until he came out first, and the whole Balenciaga, him and Adidas, and all that stuff Wait, came those out. Ads, and then those crazy ads, nobody was looking. Nobody at was before? talking about that. Nobody That's, that sucks. It all came out after his falling out with Balenciaga, and then that came out, dude. I think it's dude, so, that shit's been going on so forever disgusting. behind the scenes with them. Ugh. You don't think that was like? What, you think that was art made up? Fucking just last week. Like that had been going on just, behind the scenes. I'm baffled by like the, uh, the the type of selective outrage. You know, yes, like, in terms of yeah, yes, what yeah, we I get agree. upset about and everything. Like, Bro, like, why are we not more you, upset about like kids like dude, uh, being like portrayed in certain ways that in front of pedophiles? Yes, you got like you'll have somebody who will tweet something and say something about climate change, and everybody's gonna cancel them. Then you got this like obscene bullshit with kids. Which, by the way, I need to say this real quick. Who the fuck are these kids' parents? Yeah. Who are these kids' parents? What kind of disgusting parents? The same that like like bust them into to hang out with Michael Jackson. It, like how depraved that's and disgusting different. and and shitty of a parent, parent are you? That's different, I think. To have your kid take you a think? picture. Yeah, like that. that's different. I mean, that was that's bad too. But I mean, you watched that doc. Did you not watch the doc? Or did you did you cut yeah, it off? Yeah, I did. It was too I hard did to watch. watch it. And I didn't like watch some the parents whole got really like, they got wooed. You know what I'm saying? Like you you got yeah you, they were star chasers. Yes. and They wanted to promote yeah, their yeah. kid. But like at the at the end of the day. You yeah. knew what he was about, dude, and you're letting them hang yeah. out like by themselves. Yeah, that's a bad parent. How I mean, this is even worse, though. I that I is like. what I think is crazy. Back to your, you know, selective outrage is the how many people are giving Kim Kardashian a pass? She's make, she's making two million plus a year off of Balenciaga. Yeah. She wait when this all came out was silent for like four or five days. Dude, just cut your ties, it's, and then comes out and, and, and puts this like total piece, you know, your PC type of like tweet. Yeah. In response to it, trying to like dance both sides, and then she keeps her fucking partnership. Yeah, I know. And how were people? Why? Like, how you are, don't have enough money already. Right. Like, she's already it's ridiculous. Filthy rich. It's like you, like one of us passing on one of our smallest sponsors because we found out something about it that's paying us freaking dirt money, and you, and then we'd still stick with them. Yeah. yeah. No. Like what the fuck? No, I don't know, it makes man. Makes no sense. Then, well, it does if you think that there's other connections and shit that it can well, lead to. Speaking of connections, and this kind of brings me into another like interesting kind of conspiracy, conspiracy floating around. <laughs> So there was a guy that was a I crypto billionaire. I want to subscribe to the magazine that you get. Where is this magazine? Or ah, people send me them now. Like <laughs> I, they, they know I'm, yeah. I'm about you it. You know what, Justin? Before you say that, I want yep. to comment something on the selective outrage. Did yep. you guys know that Apple in China, because there's a bunch of protests going on in China, like a lot. Yeah. Apple disabled their airdrop and disabled ways of sharing in, in China Dude. to prevent citizens from communicating about the protests. That's and awful, stuff. man. You know that they were told by the Chinese government to do that. Apple. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit. Bro, I had Apple's so news to talk about, and you just transitioned just It's okay. I want to hear what he's going to say. <laughs> yeah. We'll go back so to yeah. ping pong, yeah. and then we'll go you to that waited because I wanted to talk about Apple. <laughs> we had go such ahead. a smooth thing going on. Yeah, so this guy is a crypto billionaire, right? Uh, apparently, like, puts out a tweet that, like, you know, CIA, Mossad, whatever, like, they're on to me, and, and um, you know, like, I may not make it through the night. I, I forget the tweet. It was, like, something along those lines, and then basically they find him, quote, unquote, drowned. Uh, in because he was trying to expose like in Puerto Rico and like all this like child trafficking and stuff oh, and wow. so he he's dead and like he literally like was tweeting about it uh, beforehand uh, to to kind of announce to people like hey pay attention you like know, and I'm I won't around. kill myself it's yeah and I'm not gonna kill like that kind oh, of a thing and then he wow. drowns conveniently and he just drowns yeah how is that a, I don't even see how that's a conspiracy theory. I, to me, yeah. if, if someone said to tweet right. out that I am not going to kill myself, and, and they gonna, do, and they do, it's because they're scared to death, and then they get killed. Like, how much more evidence? Well, those are the ones I pay attention to, right? It's like it's it's not it's it's kind of like well, this is this is just like I'm 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 paying attention and I'm watching how things are transpiring. Did either one of you guys uh, actually watch the Gislaine series on Netflix? No. Oh yeah. What? 
I know. Um, you told me guys? about. I know you told me about. It. I haven't seen it's, it. Really? If it's on Netflix. It's already past conspiracy now. It's like people know. Uh, right. We're into the shit that. Oh, you're, you're, yeah. we're in the underground stuff. Yeah. 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 No, I see that. No, it's yeah. it's worth watching. I'm only like halfway through it, but it, it was it's interesting to see what what she came from and then how she got into got into all that and everything like that. But mm. I, we can talk about it after you guys watch it. But um, Apple, you want to hear some Apple rumors? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, the they have potential. Like you, you heard of the shakeup at Disney, right? With uh, Iger and and uh, yeah. So the CEO came back. Yes, and he is one of the ones that is most likely to potentially sell Disney. the The rumor is that Apple may be the one buying Disney. Imagine the 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 what? power of the two of them. I mean, they would. If you combine their forces, they now would have a third of like the streaming power when you when that's you true. And by the way, this is moving in the direction of Why what I said sell? for the longest time that eventually there'll be like monopolies that will have all the streaming services. We won't have all this a la carte. It's not going to last. And this is then this is the speculation is that just like what happened in the, fo- the the phone business, right? At one point we had like ten different types of cell phone or uh, cell phone companies, AT and T, the single, all the all these different ones that we had. There's like three now. So the same thing's going to happen in streaming. Like I said at the beginning, is you're going to have all this a la carte right now, and then now the big some some big monsters are going to team up so they can have control of that many people. So the, the, I'm confused with the whole Disney thing because it, it's always back and forth. Like, oh, they're hurting because of like the last numbers of this movie flop, or or their parks aren't really like back up to what they're running. And then I'll hear like completely opposite information, like, oh, they're crushing it and they're Disney service. is Disney, okay. Disney got hurt, uh, uh, like they had rough, some rough times. Times, but they were, I mean, Disney to me is still uh, up there with Apple as far as strong, like, like good business models, good companies. Like, it's funny. We have these tech companies that aren't even profitable that we value at billions of dollars. And some talk about how amazing they are. And they're not even like yeah. cash rich. And then you have companies like Apple that are extremely cash rich. Disney's cash rich. I mean, they ha- yeah. they are literally collecting tickets in yeah, their parks, selling merchandise. They, ha- I mean, they. They're- so a cu- couple of things about that. First is that it wouldn't be a monopoly, a, a real monopoly. No, it's not. It's not exactly a monopoly. It's- You're just saying that there's going to be bigger companies. Uh, yeah, sure, but remember, this is unlimited bandwidth because we're talking about internet. So unlike other spaces that are heavily regulated where there's high barriers to enter into the market, that's where you see much more of these massive companies gobbling up smaller ones. Listen, my argument isn't about like, I'm not like uh, trying to tell everybody to worry about a monopoly. My point is that that's what I saw at the very beginning. Like it would go that way, that eventually a couple smart big companies would get together and be like, listen, together we can dominate this. And that's what you're going to see. Yeah, sure. You'll see some, you'll see combinations, but you're going to continue to see lots of, look, I'll tell you what, one of the biggest mistakes people make with markets, especially ones that are open, is they say, oh, this company is never going anywhere. There's no way that they could possibly get beat. And we always see this every single time that that actually is not true. For example, there's that new AI bot that uh, people are talking about right now, the startup company. They're saying you can't even tell that it's it, it, that's it's an AI bot that's talking to you. And they're saying this will overtake Google. Mm-hmm. Google, nobody would ever dare to say that. Yeah, but I ago. see, okay, I don't, they say it's going to take over Google, but Google is also leading in that, in that technology and in that space. And they have some of the best of the best when it comes to engineers and like, so. I don't know. I mean, they, some of the smartest people in the space are saying it. Um, you know, I have a cousin who works very heavily. Well, I think, it. okay. So I think the people that are saying that, I all in discussed that on their last all in podcast. And it, what they're saying is not so much that it's going to take over the company, Google. It's how we search through Google is what That's it'll what take I mean. over. It's, it's but gonna, Google could still own it. Mm. So Google could create that technology and they're already the leaders in search with YouTube and Google, that they're most likely to be the ones to take advantage of that technology, not another company that's going to surpass it because they don't have all the- We'll see because that's what what we said with social media. At one point, Facebook was so big and so strong and then uh, they, you know, and then TikTok came and then, you know, other other social media companies came. And and so I think it's going to be very interesting. I think if if we see uh, lots of regulation- where we make the barriers into the market um, really, really high, that's when you're going to see these companies stick around forever. But it's such a big bandwidth. It's really interesting. There's no, it's it's almost impossible to predict how a company to stick around because we can't predict innovation. Like yeah. it's hard for me. Like, like we can't sit here and think what's the next crazy invention or innovative thing that's going to happen. I mean, if we could, then we would be the ones 
Doing we're just seeing like more and more AI kind of coming in and and uh, creating things with art and with music and you know now with search engines yeah. and things. It'd be interesting to see like where we're gonna be in like a couple years. Yeah. Oh, you, know, you see that? What is it? Jenna, I think is the app or whatever that everyone's doing right now. What mm -hmm. is that? And and I, I think you said something off air that I totally agree with. Is like I'm so hesitant to just jump on the bandwagon of stuff like this with, yeah. with like people are so funny how quick they do after that face one that oh, was that would yeah. I just feel like they're going to take all my pictures and all my shit off my phone just like that old like age you app yeah the one from like Russia aren't like, we funny space. creatures how easily we are manipulated to give yeah. that information just so I can look cool on Instagram yeah it's like, fucking hilarious to me right it is funny it's none so easy are, none are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free that's a very true quote I think that rings who said uh, very that? true today. Oh, Ooh. is that Voltaire? I don't I like know. That. Maybe look that up. Who's that? Who's, well, who's Voltaire? Uh, Doug's going to have Voltaire. to look it up. Yeah, I just remember the quote, Adam. Don't push me. Oh, sorry. I, I can't, French <laughs> I can't remember much more about Sounds it. Sounds about... I mean, I mean, who is it that said that, Doug? We'll see. Uh, let's see. Van Gogh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Sorry with the Johann yeah. Wolfgang Van Gogh. There you go. Um, you know what's I, interesting about the Apple thing with Disney? Steve Jobs started was with Apple. Mm -hmm. Then he left, and then he started he Pixar. Yep. Pixar got bought by Disney. Yeah. Now Disney's looking to go with Apple. Oh, so the wow. speculation is that that wow. that's part of the speculation is that he's always had he's always had an affinity for for Disney affinity? and a, yeah affinity yeah uh, with with Disney and a relationship with them and beyond and that <laughs> if he was still around that he would be likely to sign with them. You think that's funny? No? No, no. It's <laughs> you didn't hear Justin. Yeah. Oh, you, you said infinity, you said it beyond. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, did, I totally what a, what a dick. That. I Sorry. Yeah. I had to. Yeah. Inter that's interesting. So that was a, that's the speculation that it's always. Yeah, been. yeah. So that's a that's a huge possibility. Do you also hear the news on uh Amazon um doing so there was all this stuff about, you know, I I love I would love watching what's going on with Elon and Twitter right now. It's so Oh my god, it's, it's so great. It's did you see the post that Mike did the other day and all the hate he got? Definitely our friend Mike Matthews. Worthy. No. Yeah, he did a post uh, about it. And and I'm on Mike's side on this. Like I am I am just loving watching this. And um, I mean, I don't know Elon, but I, as as a serial entrepreneur, I like him. Like mm. side his who I don't know. Well, he's objectively Decina did a good video on it too, just on the overall what it takes to actually run a business. I think people just like are completely I know. unaware, you know, and for him to be kind of have these harsh standards and get people all to have buy-in he's that's he's, a huge thing he's objectively the greatest entrepreneur of yes. the of the of modern the, times okay so, that's and, a that, fact. and i can i can say that right yes. i can say that yeah you're not saying he's a great guy great yeah, dad you know, right yeah. and, I, and i think it's so funny how defensive people get if like you say something like that like oh you're just dick riding him and oh you're just like every other bro that thinks he's just it's like no it's not it's like the, have you not seen what the dude has built? Yeah. Like, you think, you're not saying you're letting him babysit your kids. You're just yeah. saying yeah. Yeah. he's a crazy hang good entrepreneur. With my wife, that's for damn sure. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I hang out with my wife, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's got baby fever, dude. He's Watch out. A, him and no. Nick Cannon are going to so, gang Genghis Khan. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, I totally got uh, sidetracked with that. Sorry. Um, I mean, there was all this stuff that came out just last week or the week before about everybody dropping their advertising on Twitter. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. Guess what? They're all coming back. Yeah. Amazon just announced that they're back to Hilarious. advertising with Twitter and that they're going to spend over a hundred million dollars. Money talks, mm. man. Oh my goodness. I tell you, man, I'm happy I got back. I went on Twitter after I got booted off Instagram. I feel like it was like serendipitous because that's the place to be. I'm telling you, go through there right now. It's real cool kids. It's right. a good time. So is the, is the $8 blue check thing official yet? I have no idea. I have zero idea. Yeah. I don't know if it's a, it's, I know that they said they were going to do it. Do you know if it's a thing done? I don't know. God, we're so terrible. This is why we hire young people to work with us. Andrew, do yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. I'm way too old for this. Andrew's still too oh, old. Oh, you're already too. getting too old and worthless. God, we're going to have to get a- <laughs> We need more I'm on, I'm on We're going to need a younger you, buddy. Doug's like, $8? I used to be able to buy a house for $8. <laughs> why, Doug, why don't you do one of our commercials while Doug's doing that? Yeah. We got I, well, actually, uh, I did want to bring up one of our sponsors. We're supposed to talk about Live On, and I wanted to talk about liposomal technology. So I, I wrote down some notes because Livon's supplements use liposomal technology. This is a pharmaceutical technology used in, uh, in very few supplements, but it's also used in pharmaceuticals. So they're tiny vesicles that are made out of the same material as your body's cell membrane. So when you place supplements inside the liposomes, they can be used to safely deliver the medication to specific areas of the body to treat whatever disease or mal malnutrition. So basically it protects the whatever is in there 
from your digestive system and it delivers more of the compound to those selective tissues. Do you know how, okay, so that's, that used to be a thing that you would talk trash about certain supplements is you take these supplements Uh, and the stomach acid alone would eat up most of it before it even got to the areas it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So that was a common thing that like you, you would, people would talk trash about. Well, think about it this way. When I eat a fruit or a vegetable or meat, the nutrients that are found in those things are in the food, which contains the fibers, the fats, the proteins. And so we evolved to extract nutrients mm-hmm. we have to from break food. Down material first. Right. Yeah. So when I just take a multivitamin or a supplement and it doesn't come in something similar or in a way that can, can survive through my digestive tract or get it to the right place, it just gets destroyed or I just pee it out. Um, this is why supplementing uh, sometimes with certain nutrients, you have to supplement such higher doses to get your your blood levels up higher versus getting them from food, mm-hmm. for example. So mm-hmm. liposomal technology kind of does that, right? And and th- again, this is pharmaceutical technology and Live On Labs uses it in, in all of their products. So, Do you know h- how much more though? Like it, pr- it protects to getting to those areas, like in percentage wise? No, I it- didn't pull up any, I didn't pull up any studies on it, but I do know that it- it's yeah. more expensive, obviously, to use well, that I know pharmaceutical, That's why not everybody does Pharmaceutical it. companies will use it specifically because it's super effective. So it's like mm-hmm. a proven technology. It's not some like hype. Or whatever. What no, I love I, about their company, they just spend all their money on like the form and function of it. Like they're they're all about the, the no money left of it. No, no money, money left, left on for flavor. the flavor. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. It, I, it does. I mean, that's why I've always been okay with saying that. Is I feel like that's that's the truth. Yeah. I really think they said that, that their goal was not we want to compete with the, the, most best, the best tasting whatever. It's version, like yeah, yeah, what is going to be the best at delivering these nutrients? Dude, I got a study for you guys. That's that's kind of crazy. Doug, did you find something that you want? Yeah. So it doesn't look like they went through with eight dollar check mark. Not it's yet. not. Okay. Yeah, they announced it and then they kind of rolled back. Uh, okay, so that was just okay. some feeling. All right, so mm-hmm. check this out, dude. This is AOC this, one, this, I guess, huh? This just came out last month, and this was out of uh, Israel's big study, and it's data from fifty three three countries shows that men in the regions that they that they tested are experiencing a significant decline in total sperm counts and sperm concentrations. So this is getting really bad. So the stu- they looked at um, New York, Denmark, Brazil, Spain, Israel, and the USA, and they did a meta-analysis. And th- you're talking about, so overall, we're seeing a significant worldwide, this is a quote, right? Decline in sperm counts of over 50% in the last 46 years. Dang. And, it, and this decline has accelerated in recent years. Half. So- 46 years ago, which everybody's like, that's a long time ago. That's not that long ago. It's not even, that's a generation. They had 50% more sperm than they do now. So if that happens again and again, we're done. Like we're not going to be, we're going to be infertile. We won't be able to reproduce. All those tiny taints out there. This is (laughs) messed up. (laughs) Dude, this is literally the scientists. This is a quote. You ready for this? Our findings serve as a canary in a coal mine. We have a serious problem on our hands that, if not mitigated, could threaten humankind's survival. Hmm. We urgently call for global action to promote healthier environments for all species and reduce exposures and behaviors that threaten our reproductive health. So this is uh, this is wild. This is insane. Do you, do you believe we're moving towards a homogenous society? Do you think we're really pushing in that direction? I mean, that's what the, that's what it's looking like, dude. And how dangerous do you think, like the like what we what we're dealing with with these certain states that are allowing kids to change their gender at such a young age? Do you think this oh, is boy, making this this? Well, I mean, it's part of it, right? I mean, how can we not go there? I feel like I think that's a different. I think that's my speculation on that might be a little different. I think uh, that identity crisis. You don't think those are connected? With low sperm count? Um, I mean, it's a good question. I I don't know. Maybe. I I, I will say that kids have always had identity crisis. We all went through it. Every kid Mm. goes through it when you're an adolescent um, and and teen. I think that the options now for making yourself feel more comfortable have changed. So whereas before you might be like, well, I'm going to identify as a skater or Mm -hmm. I'm a tomboy or I like music. Now it's like, well, I'm this, I'm that. And and very socially influenced for sure. Yeah. So there, there seems to be something uh, going along uh, with that, but this, this whole fertility thing is interesting because it keeps going down this route. It may mean in the relatively near future, that the only way people are going to reproduce is by going through a fertility Well, then let clinic. me ask you this. How much do you think that's connected to low testosterone? Oh, it's people, it's grip, grip strength and, directly. and masculinity. And so 
So I guess that's my where I'm trying to make that connection. There is like this push against you know masculinity, and we're moving in this direction of like, oh, you know, maybe you're not a boy, maybe you're a girl, maybe. And we're I feel like that narrative has become more popular today than it was just a decade ago. And de- are are there any correlations between the two, or do you think they're completely? Well, I think it's all, I mean, there's a cultural thing that's happening, but it's hard to separate from what might be happening, I guess, physiologically. I do know that mental illness has exploded among kids. Uh, anxiety and depression has completely exploded since the pandemic. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine that's a, that's a, that they're a, a psychiatrist. And I asked them specifically, have you seen this rise in kids? And, and he said, oh, he goes, it's, it was, it was kind of steadily climbing but af- during and after the pandemic, he's like, it's insane. Yeah, it's rampant. Now. Yeah, he says, because a lot of, you know, when you're a kid, you're, you're I don't know, you're, you're in your head a lot anyway. You don't feel like you fit in. It's challenging. Everybody knows that. Everybody's just challenging. Mm-hmm. But these kids were shut down at home. They were isolated by and they isolate themselves a lot now nowadays as well. And so it's more internal. It's even more internal and just blows up whatever bad feelings you have. Um, and so he's like, yeah, it's just terrible. Plus they're not active. So we know this. Exercise, diet, strongly contributes to feelings of well-being and mental health. That all went to shit, and then in combination with that, with us isolation, I mean, this is crazy. But the, the fertility thing is literally a humankind ending event. That's that's what mm. people need to realize. This is not just like, a, oh my god, this sucks. This is literally if it dropped fifty six, fifty percent in forty six years, we are looking at potentially. Uh, uh, transforming mankind for the negative in a very short future where, and this look, okay. So you know that clip when I was, I was on, um, uh, what's, uh, Josh Trent's podcast. It's wellness or wisdom, wellness yeah. and wisdom, I think. wellness and wisdom. There's that clip of, uh, of me saying the but biggest the lie. lie told yeah. The, the biggest yeah. lie told to men. Basically it's that you got you know, some hate for that, huh? I got a lot of positive more than hate, but there's some people that don't like it. Cause they don't want to, they want to believe the lie, right? That, that getting married sucks, that devoting yourself to one person sucks, that having kids is terrible, that it's way better if you don't, be free, go do what you want, bang chicks, buy cars, make money, consume, consume, consume. That's a big lie. And it, it it's interesting. I wonder how much of that is connected to this drop in fertility and this drop. In other words, like they're trying to sell us on it because this is going to be the future anyway, hmm. where moving forward, the only people are going to have kids are the people going to afford crazy fertility treatment and freezing their sperm and doing all that stuff. Like that's, that's, that could be our kids generation, by the way. That's how fast it's, it's going down. So that's, that's wild to me where that's, that's the only time you'll have kids. You know, I try, I try and remember what, cause it wasn't that long ago that I was on the other side of that, that conversation. And I do remember when, when people would, would press the kids talk to me, I do remember feeling defensive and I do remember saying things like, Oh, this misery loves company. That's what that is. You know, I used to, I used to be like that. Like why, if, if kids are so wonderful, so great, why do you feel the need that you have to get me to join your team? Mm -hmm. And why, why can't you just enjoy your kids and, and, and be that way? I I love my, and I used to love my life. And I used to do that to you. But by the way, if you were a shitty person, I would not tell you to have kids. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you're a good guy. You make a great dad. That's why I used to tell you all the time. But I don't say that to shitty people. What I'm trying, what I'm trying, (laughs) what I'm trying to do right now is my best to, to recall those feelings that I had and to, to try and unpack what's going through some of these people's heads when they, when they comment yeah. on something like that. And I do, I remember, I remember feeling a little defensive when people tried to tell me how, how much better my life would be. Like, you don't know who I am. You don't know how great yeah, my life yeah. is already. Like what makes you think. And, and I also would connect it to, you know, there's a lot of people that have kids and their life gets worse. That's a fact, man. There's people that, it gets harder and they are shitty dads and they, you know, they don't see their kid. And now they just have another human they brought in this world that hates them and resents them because they're not. Would present. their life be better without kids? That's the question I always have. Cause I, the people like using those examples of, of really shitty people who are really shitty with their kids. Mm. I think they're probably shitty ass people to begin with. And I don't think it would have been better. And I'm also, yes, of course you could pick, there's lots of people that, you know, if you look at them, you go, man, you should not be a parent. By the way, just getting someone pregnant, that's not what I'm talking about. When I say being a dad or being a mom, I mean, you're, you you actively care for and you're trying to raise this kid. Now that you just got someone pregnant, any moron could do that. That's not what I talk about when I talk about this. But it, look, this is a fact, okay? If you're lucky enough to live a long life, if you're healthy and you can live to your 80 or 90, 
you better have something that you love more than yourself or you're screwed. And that's it. So fine. You don't want to have kids. What do you have in your life that you truly love more than yourself? And people are like my career bullshit. It's you know, it's career. so hard to tell somebody. It's so hard to tell somebody that that doesn't because, um, I, I, we talked about this just the other day at the live event. I was talking to somebody about, um, what was most, uh, surprising to me when I had my son was that was the first time in my, in my life in 40 years or damn near 39, whatever it was, uh, that I had realized that, oh shit, I have never loved anything more than myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you would have asked me before that, oh, I love Katrina more than me. I love my mom more than me. Oh, I love my si yeah. siblings more than me. Like I would say that, but, um, until you actually feel what that feels like, it, I don't think you realize it because I didn't realize yeah. it. And I would have, I would have had an answer for someone who says like, you know, I would, Oh, I love my career. You know, like, you know, it's no, funny. I don't. And yeah, it's true. And it's like, like I, there are people that, and I do, I do want to be clear. There are people that do, that don't have kids that do truly love something more themselves. They're typically volunteers. They typically are really so like they're, they're a monk or they go volunteer to, for this cause that they just deeply believe in. Um, or they're deeply religious, like that's where you tend to find it. But most people who say, oh, I, you know, no, I love these other things. They're not that. And, I, and the other thing I say is what the hell else are you going to do with the rest of your life? Like for reals, you're going to live a long time and you're going to not potentially develop the deepest relationships you could possibly develop. Like I have a great relationship with you guys, great relationship with my wife, but you can have a child and you can from birth to till whenever, and then their grant, their children, that's a relationship that you'll never, that is the deepest potential relationship you could ever have in your entire life. And you'll never experience that. And, uh, that, that's a, that's a sad thing. So it's, it's a huge lie. Now here's the truth. It's harder, costs more money. It's more stressful. That's true. Mm -hmm. But most things that are good are harder, more stressful and cost more money. Most things. Well, not to mention it's, it's the, the only way I'm aware of for you to potentially live on. Yeah beyond your death. I mean, like it's an extent, your kids are an extension of, of you and what you pour into them uh, to make them a, a better version of yourself is the closest thing that I could think of that allows you to live beyond your death. Yeah. I mean, yeah. cause a part of you, I mean, and Jesus, anybody who's had a kid is it's wild when you see yourself in them, you know, with things that just are ingrained, they, 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 it's in their DNA. They didn't, you didn't teach it even like there's times where I catch moments where like my son will do something that like, I haven't even taught him that and that's, but that's, a, that's me, you know, or that's mm -hmm. Katrina. Like yeah. that's, that's so wild when you think about that, like that is definitely a part of you is in this thing that is going to I, live on and beyond I do you. Get, I do get the tremendous responsibility on why people, maybe they're not honest with themselves. Maybe some people are honest with themselves and they don't want to take on such a tremendous responsibility. Like, that was that was me. That yeah. was definitely like, I, I get it. That, like, was, get that it. was me. I didn't want- It's a I, big deal. Yeah. I, I so And I think we should think of you know, parenting like that. I think we should think of children like that. I think you should think of it as not like a, it's not like getting a dog. It's not like- you know, picking up a hobby. It's literally, you're going to impact somebody like that. Um, I think it's so important that you think about that. That's why I, I probably uh, overcompensated in that area. I overthought it because of my past that I was like, I'm not this, I'm not that yeah. I need to have. All. So I probably overcompensated, I'm sure. But I mean, I feel like better that than the other way, better that than to think it's going to be easy, no big deal. And you just have them to have them. And then you're not present. You're not around. And you don't do shit. Like, to me, that's worse. Yeah, the decision to have a kid doesn't end. You know, it's not like you did it. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Oh no, there's a lot. Of, there's a yeah. lot of work and a lot of growth, and growth only happens when you're uncomfortable. And it, I mean, I don't know of anything that will make you more uncomfortable than, you know, having that reflection back yeah. at you for yeah, the yeah. next however many decades. Yeah, or yeah I definitely think that you know that uh, our culture in general could do a better job of, I guess, portraying. Uh, parenthood and and you know the value of it and I think that that that's something that's been lost uh, in a lot of content and a lot of um, things we see on TV and um, you know just because it is hard and it, it is challenging and it is a, a big responsibility uh, but just like you said much like anything else um, they sell it terribly media sells it, it as it's a been shitty terribly thing. it's sold. interesting they do because I mean 
in our lifetime, we've seen that switch. Yep. It wasn't like that when you were when we were kids, or definitely not our parents. Like growing up, like fatherhood was like it was, a, it there's a lot happening. of pride, uh, you know, associated. What with do you it think? What do you think day. was the the tipping point? Like when? Like when did? Do you think Hollywood controlled it that much? Do you think Hollywood made the decision? That, I think mm, yes. We're I gonna think make see Simpsons, you see married with children, you see like all these dumbass. Dads That's what I'm that saying. So betray. obviously, I, they hundred percent play a role. So what I'm asking is. Did they, did they, are they the ones that made that switch? Like I, who, I, who, who decided that being a dad was no longer going to be cool anymore or something that is listen, like, if you're trying to sell products, like honorable, you're yeah. trying to sell products, you know, that the best people to sell to are not people who are really concerned about raising little kids. They're, they that, make different decisions. So? Is that the thought? Oh my God. Is that the thought? hundred percent. You, you want, or you is want that, that you want, they're more likely to have more money to spend because they don't have children. That that's part so, of it. So that's why we want to that's go after part them. of it. You make, you make different decisions. You're less selfish. You're, you're way harder to manipulate. Like, let me ask you guys this. Hmm. How much harder are you to manipulate? Oh yeah. With scared. Well, no, even the, and, even the money thing you right. just said, uh, I think it's, I think it's really, Look how much it changed you. It's interesting how I spend money today now yes. just because I had a kid like, and it wasn't like I had this formal conversation with myself. Like, oh, I'm going to now do this. It's like, I just naturally just started yeah. to do it. It's wild. Um, so that's an interesting Your thought. spending habits do change for sure. Oh, your, big time. Your spending habits change. Your, it's harder to manipulate you. It's harder to make you feel uh, like super shitty to do certain things. So, so was it even sell. before? So was it even before the Hollywood? Maybe it's just advertising in general. It started. Like, it's, so like think of like, like the consumerism, mar the Marble Man. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's like right. the, what dude on the dude the on renegade the renegade guy that's just out there. Uh -huh. You know, he's free. all about himself. And he's I wish free. I Doug, you're the one that has the most insight because of all the years. Like, what would you say? Uh, what would you say was the the turning point? Like, do you remember? Like, uh, you watched probably the Andy Griffith show when you were a kid. No. <laughs> You know, I didn't watch TV when I was a kid. Oh, you didn't? I didn't have a TV. Okay, you're obviously familiar with yeah, it, though, right? Like, I am familiar you know with it. what TV is, Doug? I do, yes. <laughs> it's that magical box. <laughs> <laughs> the picture box. I mean, so... I, the light show. Honestly, I, I couldn't give you a time or uh, a situation that I mean, would I would, mark would, that time. Would you guys agree that the Andy Griffith show, the Leave mm -hmm. it to Beaver yeah, era, was very still family. fatherhood, family mm -hmm. is yeah, for sure. cool, for sure. right? Yeah, and dad was- And look, then when, it, when, when, in that timeline- Maybe it was in the 80s? Yep, I would agree. I would think it's, you know, uh, Homer Simpson, like you said, married with children, yep. uh, the bumbling dad. Um, yep. Yeah, hundred percent, and and it's. Uh, I feel like we just jumped decades, though. Well, I'm it's. I'm trying to get closer to the like the shift. Like. The bigger the market became for consumers, the more that it became obvious. Um, look for for an, every ancient, you know, wisdom or old tradition or old should I say, uh, as culture, a person's a lot of a person's value is placed on like how many kids you have. Yeah. Are you a, are you do you take care of your family? You know, like. Like, oh, you're, what are you doing going out all night? Aren't you supposed to be home taking care of your, your yeah. family? Aren't you supposed to be loyal to these people? Like, that's how it used to be. Uh, now it's like, and then and then women are lied terribly too. They're told it's oppressive, which is unbelievably uh, what a massive lie. I would say even like, so 60s and 70s, a little bit more self-indulgence, more psychedelics, more like, oh, yeah. you know, free love and like, like less like, you know, Tie me down to traditional family, uh, nuclear family, you know, type of mentality. Like it started to kind of spawn off from there. I would, I would say. Yeah, I think I would say the Marxism played a big role because there's there's economic Marxism, and they got their asses kicked, obviously during the Cold War. So they moved the culture, and the message was uh, that um, having ch that the, the the state should own children, having children is oppressive, that um, that your parents are the state. And that's who you should listen so to. So I, I do think it's going to come back, though. I do believe it's going to be cool again. I do believe. And, and I think. We're uh, definitely on the extreme other end of that right now. We yeah. are, and I don't know if it's going to get a little worse still before, guys, because we're, we're pretty dumb as humans. Like, we, I, I it, takes, mean, it takes us a while. It takes, well, a, it takes us see, a couple of slaps in the face to, like, get everybody to wake up. Tell you know? me you guys don't see this massive trend in men getting vasectomies at, like, 20, 30 years old. What a, I mean, I can't believe how That's funny you brought that up. That is true. It's, I, I it's like, been. more I mean, and more people I know. Yeah, I've never experienced that. Before they're even, like, locked into a relationship or anything, it's like, they're just, like, you know, taking care of that. So it's like, it allows for this like freedom of uh, self discovery or whatever, you know, however you want to brand it. But uh, it's interesting to me. Yeah, no, that's hundred percent. Can you look that up? It's Doug? crazy. I'm curious about that. The, the increase in vasectomies, is it like mm -hmm. if we can see the stats on that? Because you're right, Justin, I, uh, in just the last decade, I'd say 
I know way more people that are doing that before the age of 30 mm -hmm. than I ever did in my life. Now, mind you, I'm older and I have older friends, so that's so maybe that plays more of a role. I'm sure there's some sort of a bias there, mm. but that would be interesting to see if there's a rise in that. Yeah, actually, between 2020 and 2021, there's been close to a 20% increase in the Whoa. number of childless men under 30 requesting vasectomies. Wow. wow. You know, th but there's a That's, lot of things that feed into this. Bro, 20% in one year increase? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one between year. 2020 and 2021. So, so That's there's crazy. substantial. So there's there's a lot of things feeding into this. One of these wow. is that humans are a parasite or a virus. I see all these people are like, humans should disappear so the earth can flourish. Wow. It's like, what are you You're, saying? So you think that's a little bit even related to, to the climate stuff? It, everything. Everything. Wow. All, it's like, it's so bad. Like, how many people have you heard say this? Why would I have kids? when we're just polluting this earth and destroying it. Well, why do I have kids in this terrible place? Well, here's why. So you could raise good people. Yeah. Like you want to fix things, raise good people that are going to innovate, work hard. Also, you used be to honest. be a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another we interesting maybe, thing. Maybe, Let's hear know, it, like, I'm here. I don't understand. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so after the Roe versus Wade, there was a staggering increase of over 850% for the search term. Where can I get a vasectomy? Well, oh, so, okay. I mean, so I hmm. think that's an, another cause for that. Maybe. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, well, cool. I mean, you can wear a condom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's measures. Yeah, you know, because yeah, no. vasectomy to protect you from STDs. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. People don't think too much mm -hmm. sometimes. Don't uh, We have we have Caldera as another commercial Oh, dude, today, did right? I tell the you guys? Uh, I saw a, a random dude, uh, probably in his 50s, using it at the gym. He actually pulled that out of his bag and was putting it. Oh, his, really? No yeah. Way. And I'm like, hey, how do you like them? And he's like, oh, I really like it, this and that. I'm like, you know, I'm like, where'd you hear about it? And I was hoping he would say, like, do you recognize me? You know? <laughs> uh, the journeyman, actually. Yeah. I no, 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 no. <laughs> but he was, it's, it's, I'm now, see, I'm now, I've now seen it. That's the second time now I've seen it out. In they're, Lincoln. they're obviously, uh, they're making a huge push uh, advertising wise right now because it, I've had a handful of people and I've brought it up, I think, before that are like like friends from Katrina's like old work or like a, a friend of a friend who doesn't know me that well or what that and then but they've seen that has seen us on the commercial and like oh my god Adam's famous I saw him on this thing like <laughs> because of their their them and Viore their yeah. two commercials they've been they've been pushing those so hard that I've had a, like a small wave of people that have come in that we're just unaware of what we even did that mm -hmm. are now like seeing us on the commercials. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I've seen it a few times now. It's, are, good, it's good stuff. I are, think they're blowing up. So. Are, Doug, are you, are you consistently using the eye stuff? Every day. You are now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is your route? Okay. Because you're, you're using like me, you're using, I'm not, that's the only one I'm not consistently using. So I, I use the, I think it's clean slate is what I use in the shower to wash your face with. Yes. Then mm -hmm. I use the, what's the cream called? Uh, boy. Right uh, here. Yeah, right there. It's called the base layer. Base yeah, layer. Base yeah. layer. Uh huh. And then the serum. Yeah. When do you use the the eyelid stuff? So I use the uh, the good, which is the oil. Yeah. At night. Okay? okay. In the day, I do the clean slate in the shower, and I use the the cream, and then I do the eye stuff after that. You don't have the serum on right now. No, I don't. Wow. He looks, looks beautiful. Yeah, you look like you're glowing. Well, thank you. Gorgeous. Hey, Doug, yeah. I sent Good you a, lighting in here. Real quick, just to end this off, I just have to show this picture. I think Justin will crack up at it. Can you pull up this picture I sent to the group text? This is a picture post snowball fight, Princeton versus uh, a Princeton freshman versus sophomore snowball fight in 1893. <laughs> okay, so eight, look at these guys' faces. Oh, scroll God. down more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those weren't snowballs. Those were Bro. ice balls, dude. Uh, oh, hey. With yeah, rocks. We're talking about how much you know, times have changed. Hey, play, like play that. a, that's a snowball plenty of sperm fight. swimming that's around a, there, dude. Play that's a legit fight. snowball fight. Would, hey, we can't hang up either before one of you guys uh, recommends somebody. You guys have oh, somebody Arthur or... Brooks. I got to mention Arthur Brooks. I know we've talked about him before. I love him. He's uh, He's got to be. What is his? Is he? Does he tweet more or Instagram more? Where do you, you know, follow him the most? I Both, but um, I, I went on his Instagram and here's a wonderful quote that he said. Arthur Brooks is he's a he's a professor. Is that what his Instagram handle is? He writes for the Atlantic. Arthur Brooks. Yeah. yeah. So Arthur C. Brooks is his Instagram. Check out this quote. It's very nice. The secret to happiness isn't falling in love, it's staying in love, which depends on what psychologists call compassionate love. Love based less on passionate highs and lows and more on stable affection, mutual understanding, and commitment. And again, he's an expert on happiness. So great page. If you want to feel good, he's one of the few social media pages that you can go to and feel better yeah. after coming off than oh, absolutely. Hey, what's up? You got to check out one of our longest running sponsors, Organifi. They make organic performance enhancing, uh, body enhancing supplements. I actually 
helped design their latest product called Peak Power. If you like pre-workout supplements, but you want one that's natural, that's not going to make you feel overly stimulated, something that's going to give you smooth, consistent energy that lasts, no crash, Peak Power. Give it a try. It'll blow away the pre-workout that you're currently used to. They also have other products, but that's the one I'm recommending right now. Go check them out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. All right, here's the rest of the show. Our first caller is Stephen from Pennsylvania. Stephen, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, yeah, it's awesome to be on. Thank you for having me. Um, I was at you guys' live event in Ohio a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I only got to meet Sal because the lines are so long, but it's uh, really cool to be on with all of you guys. So well, at least me. He yeah. tends to have the shorter lines. So. Yeah, we're we're pretty popular. <laughs> Sorry about I got that. that in before I could say anything. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll hop in. Um, so I'm 27 years old. I've been uh, conventionally weight training for about 12 years now without really taking any time off. Uh, the most time I've ever taken off was about for about 12 days for my wedding just recently. Um, I'm a trainer. I track my calories and food accurately and consistently bulk to about 13 to 15 percent body fat, and cut down to about 8 percent body fat, and have a lot of experience with training, nutrition in general. Um, six foot two. I'm actually about 205 pounds right now, with a total of 102 pounds of skeletal muscle mass currently. Plus or minus 11% body fat uh, since I'm bulking at the moment. I've gone through MAPS, MAPS anabolic, aesthetic, split, powerlift, performance. I uh, just recently started MAPS strong, so about two months in or a little less than that. Uh, and I've noticed my body's getting like pretty beat up, like more than usual. Uh, lower back seems to be more sore than usual, assuming that's because of the amount of hip hinging. But I've also noticed some excessive joint pain in my shoulders and elbows. So I was wondering if you guys have any advice on how to mitigate the potential for injury and excessive joint strain with a higher volume and, uh, program with heavier compound lifts like Map Strong. And where do you think I would benefit most moving forward? Yeah, no, Pro it's <coughs> common. Probably pulling back on the work sessions a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I mean, you know, anytime you're doing a workout and you're starting to notice the signs that you're not recovering fully and you start to get joint pain and you feel like you're overworked. Um, the first thing I would do is, redu is reduce the intensity. And then the second thing I would do is reduce the volume. Um, or you could do both at the same time. You could take the volume and intensity down to um, significantly. So I would cut the volume down by like a third, cut the intensity down by a good third. And then do that for a little while until you start feeling really good. Um, when we create the programs, we create them for kind of a general avatar. But you got to listen to your body. And there's lots of circumstances that can change in your life that can make a program more or less suitable. So I'm not saying this is you, but, you know, perhaps sleep is different than it was before. Uh, maybe there's more stress in your life. Diet, maybe not as good. Or just it's just too much, uh, you know, volume and intensity, um, cumulative uh, for your body. And the answer is not to eat more, push harder, work through it. The answer is to scale back, bring it back. And give yourself a good three, four weeks of that until you're feeling really, really good. And what'll happen in that that scale back period is actually you'll actually find yourself building muscle and getting stronger. And the reason why I'm saying that is a lot of times people think scaling back means reducing their potential for results. Studies are quite clear on this that the the deload weeks or the taking time off when somebody's training really hard is when they typically see the most gains. So it's exciting on both avenues. You feel better and you'll start to see uh, progress simultaneously. Yeah, there's no like one answer for this because th there is a lot of different things you do. You mentioned low back and then and attributing that probably to a lot of the hip. There is definitely a lot of posterior chain work in, in strong, super aware of that. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, one way would it be to take a lot of those compound lifts and scale back one set. Another way would be like if there is a simple is one exercise that you find way more taxing than others, maybe replace that with something. This is where I would use maybe machines or maybe like an isometric type of exercise or a different movement altogether to replace one of those movements that you feel are taxing. Another option would be to look at the work sessions because I know in strong, the work sessions are probably- They're harder than the foundational. Yeah, they're the most yeah. intense, uh, you know, off, quote unquote, off foundational days that I think we have in any of our programs. And so that's probably where I would look is I'd probably be like, I'd, I'd really pull back. Maybe I would completely 
eliminate the way they're programmed and actually and sub in like a, a prime pro type of or like a or movie. like trigger sessions instead of yeah, work sessions. Trigger yeah, because I agree. I think it's probably the most demanding program we have in terms of like in combination on those frequency builder days. Like we we up the intensity in terms of you know those work sessions are pretty pretty exhausting, pretty demanding. And then on top of that, all that emphasis on posterior chain on, on, you know, the foundational day. So I would, I would investigate in that and like maybe replace it with some trigger session or some mobility focus. Yeah. Steven literally okay. cut the vol, cut the intensity, cut the volume and give yourself about three weeks of that and see how you feel. And, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bet you that you'll feel stronger, um, and, and actually put on a little bit of muscle through that process. Okay. Do you guys have any advice or like, uh, recommendations for like replacing, deadlifts because i have deadlifts today and um i mean my my lower back is definitely pretty shot um my i take a lot of like pride in my form like how like how well i i my technique is um i don't but i don't know why but i i think it is just the, the hip hinging and the posterior chain work but uh i don't know if i should just cut them out completely and like move, like to like the second movement um I don't know if you guys like. I've had a hard time finding a direct replacement for them. Well, how about how about single leg? I was just gonna say. How you, about do some single leg right now? I would do single leg toe okay. touches without resistance. In fact, yeah. okay, or, yeah. or light dumbbell type of work with that. I think. I mean, be. depends if your back's really feeling it. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. If my okay. back's really feeling it with deadlifts, I'll do single leg toe touches and go slow and balance, and I won't use any re resistance other than my body, and that usually does the trick for me. Do you have map symmetry, by the way? I do not. Okay. No. That would be the program I would follow next. Yeah. And then do you are you do you have Prime Pro or Prime? I have both, yeah. Okay, good. I would do Prime Pro's kind of mobility work if you do cut out okay. a work session. You can okay. make it like a 45 minute mobility session with stuff from Prime Pro, but symmetry would be where I'd go next for sure. Okay, cool. All right, man. Awesome. Right on, I do have a follow-up real quick. Yeah. Um, so my wife who introduced me to you guys originally a few years ago, she is uh she's a kettlebell coach. Hmm. And I know you guys got this question, uh, I think a few weeks ago, I think I remember, but she is really hoping you guys could put together like an unconventional training uh, yeah. program. I've had a lot um, of uh, questions for that. Yeah. Yeah. It could be, it could be cool. She does a lot of like kettlebell training and, uh, that's what she does for a living. So I think that would be really cool if you guys could put something together like that. I mean, I really, I love strong. It's a lot of fun. I've done performance. That was a lot of fun too. So this is just not what I'm used to. Um, so I think something like that could be pretty cool. Yeah. That's, we, we get people asking about that and, uh, we did mention like an old timey, yeah, old timey yeah, kind of program. Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, which I would, I mean, we might be able to combine the two yeah. or just do one or the other. So I think at this point too, I mean, there's other, like we're getting into more niche categories because we've kind of hit with broad strokes uh, most of what's out there. So I think, you know, it may make sense in the future to really kind of dive into cool stuff like that. So we'll see. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for the awesome. feedback. Well, thank man. you guys so much. I appreciate it. I got it, brother. On. All right, guys. Yeah, this this message goes out to the fitness fanatics. I want to be, I want to be clear with that because the average person who struggles with consistency probably isn't going to benefit from this, but you know, when I, and I'm a fitness fanatic, right? And recently I hit a, a, a lifetime PR in my deadlift and I'm hitting some PRs and overhead presses and stuff. And the biggest thing that I did that can, to contribute, because I did a few things, but the biggest contributing factor was literally doing less than I thought that I should. In other words, mm. I all scale back volume, but I scaled it back to a point that where I said, okay, this is where I think it should be. I'm going to go even further back and my body just responded. And the reason why I'm communicating that is uh, we think we're self-aware. When you're a fitness fanatic, you love the pain, you love the workout so much. You think you're aware of the appropriate intensity and volume, but you're probably not. So assume that you're not and take it back even further from that. And that's, again, that's to the fitness fanatics. Yeah, I was going to say, that's that's definitely the message for uh, the ones that have been the most consistent lifetime lifters, yep. the ones that are in the gym all the time need to hear uh, that because it's just been ingrained in their head because they get so much momentum and seen so much results uh, just by showing up and putting the work in and then adding more work. Now, they may be at a point where just pulling back is going to have a substantial uh, result. I, I like this question a lot because the the strong when we wrote strong, you have to keep in mind that we're yes, we were writing for the general population, but we also wrote it hoping to help anybody who was getting ready for a strong competition that it would they would benefit. Right. And, I, and I remember talking to Robert Oberst when we were and, and the importance of uh, building that gas tank and that resiliency. And so 
you know, if you were going to compete, uh, it would be more important to kind of, you know, push through for mental fortitude purposes in something like this versus the general pop who's just trying to get the biggest bang for their buck from the programming. It makes way more sense to scale out or even potentially eliminate some of those work sessions because of what their how their body's talking to them. You're not a full time strong athlete uh, athlete. So you're utilizing some of the the tools from there. To me, that's a, a perfect example of somebody's like, listen, this is where you're not quite taking it to their extreme level where you scale back a little bit on that. And I think that's the important and, takeaway. And the mental shift is this, that if you're doing a program, even a well-written program, you're following a MAPS program, well-written, you know, very thoughtful, right? If the program is making you feel beat up or your joints are hurting um, or you feel overtrained, there's nothing wrong with you so it's not wrong with your body because I know some people are like, well, well this, they wrote this program, so I'm just going to keep pushing through. No, no, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with you. There's something wrong with the program. Modify it. Modify it so that it starts working for you. Don't be afraid to do so. Our next caller is Angela from New York. Hi, Angela. How can we help you? Hi. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I'm a huge fan, so I really appreciate your time. Um, I'm just going to read my question. Um, so I'm a relatively new trainer, and I'm confused about programming. So NASM says to start with a phase on stabilization. So a lot of unilateral exercises, ball exercises. Um, and then I look at anabolic and I've also done aesthetic and the pre-phase, which also addresses muscle imbalances, has all traditional exercises just with lower steps. Also NASM typically starts with hypertrophy, not strength, which I've noticed um, is different with both of those programs as well. So my question is, where do I start just an average person who wants to build muscle? And then I was also wondering, is this something that I would learn from the Mind Pump NCI group? And then if so, how do I join that? Okay, great question. So first off, we're way better than NASM. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, so, okay. no, no, here's the deal. I, I want to be real clear here, okay? We write programs uh, for the general population. We have to design it for a, an avatar. None of our programs will ever compare to what a good trainer can do for an individual client, okay? So- NASM is trying to teach you how to create programs for the typical deconditioned client. So what they're telling you is, is actually correct. Now, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic was not were not designed for the deconditioned beginner, okay? They were designed for somebody who's got some experience with strength training and can do those exercises with relatively easy control. And MAPS Anabolic doesn't start with the with a uh, strength phase. It starts with pre-phase which is higher repetitions, then you move to phase one. But if you were to start our programs as a complete, like a deconditioned client, you would start with something like Starter. Mm -hmm. You would incorporate things from MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro. In fact, as a trainer, Angela, I'm going to ask you this question at, with, at risk of Adam losing his shit. Do you have Prime and Prime Pro? No, I, I don't. I'm oh sorry. God. And I just missed it on the sale too. I swear I'm brand new, but yeah, I All right. no excuses. Well, I'm going to, I'll send you prime because I think that's going to be the most, one of the most valuable things you could get. I think you should also look into prime pro. Both of those okay. are going to be super, super valuable with our clients uh, when you work with them. But our programs are, I mean, they're written with a particular person in mind. And I mean, we did create some for the total beginner. But I mean, we're, look, a personal trainer who's good is going to be able to assess someone individually, look at them, watch them as they train, modify on the fly. Like that's the best. If I were to kind of construct um, using our programming and, and if I was like a, a trainer and I'm, and I'm addressing somebody that's just coming in for the first time, Prime is definitely where I start to be able to assess like where to kind of navigate with that that client first and foremost. And so that could lead me back into Prime Pro, which is there's some some serious dysfunction and some serious imbalances that we need to investigate and dive into and, uh, you know, reinforce uh, with strength and stability. Or, you know, maybe we're going forward and we, they've never lifted weights before so that we get into starter. So we work on that instability, but we're also starting to add some load. Or if they're not ready for load, maybe we go into, um, you know, maps anywhere because we don't use any load. We're using body weight. We're using a lot of corrective exercises within that program uh, to really build that kind of foundation. And then from there, you know, maybe... Maybe we get through that and we get into, you know, map symmetry because now I'm, I'm addressing, you know, both sides of the body and I'm trying to make sure that, uh, you know, we're not neglecting any kind of dysfunction and strength in that uh, capacity. So we do have that, the, these sort of precursors going into 
uh, you know, your, your maps anabolic and your, our kind of foundational staple, uh, type of, of workout programs. But, um, I, I think too, we don't really address that because a lot of times like people that are drawn to our podcast are somewhat familiar with the gym or somewhat have a handle on working out. Uh, but in terms of like coaches that follow us, like that would be sort of my prescription. Totally. I'm glad that you went that way. This is the exact same direction I was in. And this is a reminder for me that we need to create a trainer bundle that would include, I think, all the... the like I, the sequence, right? Yeah, yeah the, not only the sequence, but the, the programs, I think, that would most benefit like the the client from beginning to at least like the first year of training. And what that would look like is Prime, Prime Pro, Starter... Resistance any, would anywhere, probably be there. Yeah, yeah, anywhere's in there. Right, so... And, 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 and to Justin's point, the very first one... So when you, when you first meet a client, you do an assessment. I'm assuming if you have an ASM, you probably do the basic squat assessment and you look at their imbalances and, and address any aches or pains. So our MAPS Prime is a even more thorough assessment. So we have the, the squat in there, we have the windmill in there, and then we have a wall test in there. So we actually have three tests and each, and we break the body up in three quadrants. And in the, in each one of those, you have, okay, if they break down, they fail this test, these are the exercises they need to do to fix it. And we teach you that in that. So it's an incredible tool for a trainer. And based off how dysfunctional their movement is would really dictate what program of ours I would take them. Justin's point, they, let's say they're super deconditioned, advanced age, can't handle any sort of load. So then I'm going to probably use something like Anywhere or our suspension program where it's just mm -hmm. body weight type of movement that I, that I feel very safe with. Okay, let's pretend they're a little more advanced. Like they actually have a decent squat, but they, they're they still, this is brand new. Oh, maybe I can go right into anabolic. Or maybe I see a lot of discrepancy from left to right. Like everything on their left side's messed up. They have shoulder rolls forward on one side. They have an asymmetrical shift in their squat. And I see a lot of imbalances from left to right. Oh, I might go to symmetry. I'm going to start them on symmetry for the first program because we address isometrics and unilateral movements all in symmetry. That's what that program is designed around. So really... No matter what the client, uh, what who the client is, or wh what level they're at, we have created a program for them. So there is something for that person, and and you decide that as a coach and as a trainer based off of going through like Prime and assessing them. Another thing, so another thing I want to give you. So Sal already sent you Prime. And so I also want to give you free access to our forum because we have a lot of other coaches and trainers in there. And this will be a great resource for you as you're coaching clients. Like say you take them through prime and you're like, Hey, I noticed this and this, what would you guys suggest? Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I point this person in what direction you're going to get. And they'll answers. help you modify it and, and tailor it a little more specifically to the individual. So that yeah. always helps. Yeah. Because you're new, I would suggest using our programs as a, as a, as a skeleton, a scaffolding, and then through the programs, modify the exercises to meet uh, the client's needs. But the most valuable ones for you are Prime, Prime Pro, and Starter. Those will be the three that are, I would say are the absolute most valuable that are probably going to apply the most to your beginner uh, clients. But again, we're going to send you Prime and we'll give you access to the forum so you can ask questions uh, for other more experienced trainers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So then two questions. Um, so why do they start? So again, with like the NASM, they say, okay, start an eight to 12 hypertrophy yeah. rep range. But then when you're looking at like anabolic after the pre phase, or even I think with, I haven't done aesthetic in a while, but I think that one starts with um, lower rep range as well. Yeah. Like, I, is there any rhyme or reason I to, do. to that? Absolutely. So do you, you work out a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, before you found Mind Pump and MAPS Anabolic and all that stuff, what rep ranges did you normally work in? Okay, that makes sense, yes. I guess. Yeah. So I'm going to start tell. I'm going to start you off in the one that's going to give you the most bang for your buck, and I'm going to blow your mind and then you're going to love MAPS. And that's why I started the original MAPS Anabolic with a low rep phase. Um so but if I'm working with the everyday average person, mm -hmm. I mean I'm going to individualize it to the to the person. But I know, we know that the average person listening to us who works out somewhat probably never trains in those low rep ranges. Let's which, start a power Which, by the way, okay, so, and, and let me give you two examples of how I could take MAPS Anabolic and completely utilize it for two different people and different. So let's say I assess you and um, we're, we're talking and, oh, how do you normally train? You're like, oh, I love to train in the high rep range. I love supersets or circuit training. I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm going to run you through MAPS Anabolic phase one first and, and, and so forth. Let's say you're the opposite. Maybe I get you and you're like, man, I, I love strength and I, I always tend to lift really heavy and I, and I don't like supersets. I'll flip 
anabolic on you. That's right. I'll run in phase three. I'll start you in phase three, then go two, then go mm -hmm. one. So it, okay. there, you and you as a coach have this ability to kind of modify that. And, you know, just to piggyback off of what Sal said, what was so brilliant about him doing that? I remember when I first looked at anabolic, when he sent it over to me was I knew that that was a majority of my female. First of all, uh, 60 to 70 percent of my clientele was female. 60, 70 percent of the people that I was helping did not you know, train heavy. They like, they tend to train in the more hypertrophy, lightweight, lots of reps. And so the idea of getting that client to start in a strength phase, it always blew their mind because they, it, you know, it was so novel to their body. So that's why I love that he did that. But that doesn't mean that I would not, you know, flip it on its head for somebody who told me that, oh, I always strength train. Well, if you always strength train, I know by putting you in phase three, you're going to see more results right out the gates because of that. And that's where the coaching part on your part, you, know, you take our programs it's the, and modify. It's the reason why most people love phase one the most of MAPS Anabolic. It's because the it's the one that they do the least. That's, that's just most people. Mm -hmm. And then would you cater that, you know, obviously with an individual program, everything would be specific to the client, but if they're starting, for example, in a fat loss phase and they're in, you know, a cut, would that impact how you're going to no. do their, their no. rep range? No, no. Oh, look at, look at resistance training through the lens of building muscle and building strength. That's it. Cutting, bulking, that's a diet thing. And the goal with strength training or resistance training is always to try to build muscle. At the very least, what will happen in a cut is you'll preserve the most muscle with the right strength training program. So don't look at your strength training program and say, which one's going to burn the most fat, which one? No, no, no. It's always about building muscle. It's the diet that takes care of the fat loss. Okay, great. Thank right. you. No problem. Thanks for calling uh, in. Oh, last question. Sorry. How do I join? Cause I, I Googled it, but I didn't see anything. Do you still have that, that mentorship program? With oh, NCI? with NCI. Let's yeah. ask that. Yeah. For a second, uh, Doug, maybe Doug can find the link for us. Is it, is it NCI mind pump or it's, Mind Pump NCI or NCI Mind Pump? What is it? <laughs> yeah, give, give us a second. Well, well I think we have links for both of them, and one of them sends to one, and one's, uh, there are two different things that they're sending to. Yeah, yeah, it might be Mind Pump NCI. Let me double let's, check. Yeah, let's I double check it so we can get it here on the on the podcast because we'll send you the link also through email uh, when you, you get your free MAPS Prime program. You know, it looks like both of those work. They do. And they both send you the same place? No, no, they don't. They're two, two different places. One of them is like the our coaching that we do yeah. every Wednesday. And then the other one is like in, in getting involved in like their their programs and all their stuff. So which one's the coaching? Because that's what she's interested in. It's strange because they're both going to the same page right in, now. NCIMindPump.com. All right. Let's go there. And uh, that's where you can get yourself signed up. So we'll see you, I guess, uh, maybe next week because we do this once a week. We get on there and we talk to trainers. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No problem. Right, thanks, thanks, Angela. Thank you. I love new trainer questions. Because yeah. it's a good question, right? Because it's a good you're reminder. Getting, you're going through NC, you're going through, excuse me, NASM. You're looking at our programs. And because you're not quite familiar with what's going on, you're like, this is conflicting. Really Who do to, I listen to? We really need to make a trainer bundle. I, I agree. We really need to make a bundle of what we would consider like most the, valuable for trainers. Yeah, the core like five programs and then how we would utilize them to get most all clients started uh, in, in the training process. I just think that we get this too much. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. But yeah, I, you know, I'm glad she asked those questions because uh, people might actually think that the phases in some of our programs are because it's progressing you uh, from like level. It's not so they're, they're, the reason why the reason why they're called phases and not levels is because it's not like you're advancing to the next level. It's just a different phase, mm -hmm. and one phase is not more valuable than the other because it does more reps or less reps, it's more valuable than the other because it's the one that your body needs at the moment. So you can definitely flip the phases uh, depending on where you start. It's just most people are not powerlifters yeah. when they first buy one of our programs. Most people work out in that supersets, high rep, higher rep type training. Yeah, and we did try and address a lot of the um, new lifters coming in and with these other programs, we don't highlight probably enough. So I, I'm glad that, uh, you know, we can get somebody to have us highlight them a bit more and, and bring them to the service because they're very valuable for trainers, coaches, and also totally. uh, the very beginner. Our next caller is Aaron from Missouri. Aaron, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, thanks for having me on. You got My it. wife and I, we've been listening to you guys since like 2021 um, in the middle of the pandemic. I've actually gone back and listened to, I'm pretty sure almost every episode wow. um, and then listen to you guys currently. But my question I want to give you first and then give you a little bit of background is what is the best way to determine what my fitness goals should be 
at every stage of my life. So at first, my wife and I started listening to you. We were in the middle of the pandemic, you know, gained weight like probably most everybody during the pandemic. And we really wanted to get back into shape. So we found your podcast, started cutting our calories back, and we were actually going through the MAPS anabolic YouTube free videos. And I just want to say as a side note to anybody that's out there listening, wondering if that program's worth buying. It totally is. The YouTube videos are great, but the program is, is just much better. Um, and so I was about 175 pounds for a 5'8 guy, about 20% body fat. And in two months doing that, I lost um, and got down to about 150 and dropped to 15% body fat. My goal then was to hit 12%, um, but I kind of plateaued for a while. I was eating about 1,600 calories, and I really think I used the tools you guys gave me and abused them a little bit just to get me down that fast. Um, so after the plateau, I fell off from working out for a little bit, and then I was about 145 pounds but lost most of my muscle. Someone pretty close to me said, you know, I look pretty skinny, but I didn't look healthy. So I started working out again. I bought anabolic. I bought aesthetic, started running those programs. I've done that twice now, back to back. And I'm about to finish up aesthetic for the second time. Um, I'm eating about 2,600 calories now and I feel pretty good, but I just am still discouraged at my body fat percentage. And I'm wondering if my goal should be strength or body fat percentage. And I'm about to be a father in March. And as you guys have said so often, things change working out when you become a new father. So how do I determine what my goal should be? And how do I have a healthy relationship with those goals in the future? Oh, boy. Good question. Uh -huh. And congratulations on the, the new arrival coming soon. Thank you. All right. So you're looking to do this forever, right? You, you, you want to have a, yes. a, a lifelong uh, exercise pursuit or fitness relationship? Okay, so um, here's an easy way to determine what your goal should be. Look at your life and list your priorities and then use fitness as a tool to improve the quality of those things or improve your ability to do those things. So let's say I'm going to make a list for you. Maybe your list is different, but let's just say towards the top of your priorities is uh, you know, being a good father, being a good provider, being a good partner. Okay, how can I use my workouts and my fitness to to amplify those or strengthen me in a way to make me better at those things. And then that's it. And that's pretty much it. Now within that, you could say, um, you know, for the last six weeks, I've been training in this particular way. It seems to be stale. I'm noticing some aches and pains. So now I'm going to scale back and try this other form of training. Or I, tr I trained for strength in these three lifts. Now let me try training in these other three lifts. But always keeping in mind what your what the, the number one priorities in your life are. And the reason why I'm saying this to you, because there's nothing wrong with fitness goals, but if you want a really solid, lifelong relationship with exercise, use it like the ultimate Swiss Army knife. Like you pull it out and you go, I'm losing sleep right now because I got a new baby. How can I use exercise to help me deal with this? Or, you know, my business is, uh, I got some stressful stuff happening in my business. How can I use exercise to help us? Or, man, everything's going easy in my life right now. Everything's going great. How can I use exercise to make it feel even better? And when you do that, it becomes this, this incredible lifelong relationship. And that's the way exercise should be used when you're looking at it from the lens of forever. There's no, there's no wrong answer necessarily to this. And it really depends on what you want to do. But I know that, okay, so let's let's take the whole getting ready for fatherhood thing right now. So you, you tend to have like two really common body types. You have the body type one that is probably like Sal and I, where we if we stop training the same kind of volume, like it seems like muscle falls off of us as, as quickly as anything else. So it's like it takes so much work to build all this muscle. And then as soon as I fall off consistency or fall off diet, muscle falls off my body. Like crazy. Then you have other people when they fall off the wagon of training, they don't really lose as much muscle, but body fat comes on really quick. Like depending on which one of those avatars you identify more with might be different on how I strategy, uh, strategically prepare myself for fatherhood. So if I'm somebody who loses muscle really easy, like I do, like my goal going into fatherhood was like, I'm going to pack on as much muscle as I can getting ready for being a father. Cause I know I'm probably not going to get as much of the volume of training yeah. as I normally do. And so that was like my strategy. If you were the opposite, I would go the body fat percentage. Like you were kind of alluding to earlier. Like I'd try and get as lean as possible heading into fatherhood. Cause I know I'm probably not going to be moving as much and I'll probably eat excess calories here and there. And I, and I know I put on weight pretty quick. So 
depending on uh, you, I would like probably strate- strategically approach fatherhood maybe differently based off of that. And then back to what Sal was saying about really trying to optimize your life. Like if you also told me that you're achy and slow, like, uh, you know, I might go a more performance mobility mm-hmm. route. So, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, determine exactly what I would, would tell you without knowing more detail about you, but you, you probably know better than anybody. Yeah. You know, I, I thought about this quite a bit. Um, and I know, well, have you listened to the the latest one we did with uh, Jason Phillips? I thought I saw something in your question uh, that you've written, um, but there was basically like broken down into three different pursuits. So you had like your longevity focus, optimizing your health. You had like your performance, very specific goals of like gaining strength or, you know, whatever that was performance wise. And then also to just more of an aesthetic goal overall uh, in terms of like body composition or, you know, like enhancing and developing certain muscles to, you know, gain a certain shape and size. Um, And this is just something that, is there's no wrong answer in terms of like which area or should you focus on exclusively, but it's just something to always acknowledge. Like where have you been putting most of your effort? Like, where does that lie? Like where, where are the deficits right now? And like, what, what environment are you stepping into? Uh, so obviously going into fatherhood is going to look a lot different than what habits and uh, your, where your focus was and your mindset was, uh, previous to that. And so I think that this is just always something that should be top of mind because there is a different protocol. There's a different way to train your body to produce, uh, you know, a desired result in that direction. Um, but, uh, and this is where we're always kind of constantly thinking about this in terms of what we can create, uh, to fill needs for people, uh, in a lot of those different directions, but it's just a constant kind of revolving, uh, assessment of yourself, a self-assessment, uh, to, to realize like we're in different seasons all the time in life. And, uh, you know, your work schedule changes, your, you, you may move, you know, and, and that just, you know, creates this entirely different environment. So, um, I, I just think it, that's kind of the fun dynamic part about uh, a fitness and, and health uh, driven pursuits is that uh, it, there's just always something uh, that's kind of just naturally falls off that we can address and we can improve our body overall. Yeah. Now, Aaron, you, you, you said in there, how do I fight the urge to switch so quickly? Um, I guess from one goal to another or one program to another. When you decide to train or work for something or work towards something, then the, the mind game begins where you learn to enjoy the process of what you're going through. Because once the novelty wakes off, uh, wears off, which takes a few weeks, then if you haven't learned to enjoy that process, then you're going to want to switch to something else, to switch to something more novel. And what happens, you end up spinning your tires in the dirt because you don't allow your body the ability to adapt and and get really good at whatever you were training for. So when you're in something, then the idea, the goal is, okay, now I got to, to, to really wrap my mind around enjoying this process. So if it's mobility, what you don't want to do is think about your maximal strength. Oh, how much am I losing on my deadlift and my squat? Like, okay, no, no, I got to enjoy the mobility process and I got to become this mobility person while I'm doing that. So that's the game that will prevent you from switching from, you know, from the, the every shiny object, right? Chasing every shiny object because that can definitely become a problem. But I'll tell you what, the most valuable program for you becoming a new father, I'm going to tell you right now, is MAPS 15. Yeah. Oh, yeah. MAPS 15, do you have that program? I don't. I just bought um, Performance and Strong because I didn't know what I needed to do after Aesthetic uh, during your sale, so I don't have 15 yet. Okay, so MAPS 15 is going to be a game changer as a father because you, there's definitely going to be moments where you're not going to be able to find an hour to work out, but you'll probably be able to find 15 to 20 minutes to do something. Um, so it's a game changer. we got great reviews from people in terms of results and consistency. So I'm going to send that to you. And then I also think Thank you. Uh, MAP suspension uh, would be valuable for you because mm-hmm. that's another program you could do without having to go to the gym. And then when you go back to the gym, I like MAP symmetry uh, for a lot of people. But I definitely think MAP 15 is going to be extremely valuable. Build as so much muscle right now as you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to send that. It. I'm going to send that over to you. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I think, um, what you guys were talking about, especially with the triangle, um, I definitely find myself falling more in the, what my body looks like composition. Uh, and then when I get into that and I'm training for that, well, then I see the weight come off, especially during aesthetic, you start seeing the weight come off in those supersets where I'm at now. 
and I just get discouraged and I want to be strong, but I also want to look good. And that's where my back and forth kind of comes from. So I think that's really helpful for me. Thank yeah, you. No problem. Stay yeah. in it and you Trust can't, the process. and you can't have everything. Yeah. yeah. That's just, that's just a life lesson. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, man. Okay. For, Thank thanks, you guys so much. Thanks, thanks for calling in and congratulations again. Yeah. I mean, when, when I, when I figured out, uh, to use my workouts and my nutrition to help make me better at the things that I value, they became more valuable themselves. Like, like just see an example with diet. When I go down to, sometimes I'll go down to LA and I'll do these like podcast tours, right? Where I'm doing like three or four podcasts and I really want to be sharp. I really want to be sharp. I want to have good verbal fluency. I want to do a good job. I typically, this is when I utilize fasting and ketogenic diet, which are both not the best diets for me when it comes to strength and to, and for performance. Mm -hmm. When I know that I'm going into a period of time where I'm not going to be working out, well, this is when I train really hard leading up to it because then those become recovery weeks. You know, that's what I did the last two weeks. I took off when, uh, when Dahlia was born is I worked out real hard leading up to it. And then the two weeks that were off, well, now it's natural that I'm kind of relaxing and hanging out with the baby. So, and, it, and, it, and when I didn't do that, my, believe it or not, my workouts and my diet were not as valuable. Now they're far more valuable because of yeah, it. Well, that's why we just can't get married to these modalities, yeah. right? Got to be open because there is a, a better tool for the job and whatever uh, season of life that you're in. Like it, it's, it's always better to kind of visit something that like best applies. Yeah. I, th I think this is figuring this out is necessary if you're going to make health and fitness a lifelong pursuit. Yes. Um, I, personally, I think this has been one of the greatest hacks for me was, is, is learning that, like to let go of these, you know, specific modalities and not identifying with a type of lifter or person that trains and being open-minded to all these different tools and resources that we have at our disposal and, and pursuing these in these, these different goals and, and sticking with it even though it's not up my alley, right? If I was the aesthetic physique guy, you know, becoming the the mobile Gumby dude was like definitely a mind fuck going through that process. But then trusting that process that like, I got to let go. I got to let go of, I'm not, I'm not doing this training modality right now uh, with to pursue a, a bodybuilding physique. So I got to let go of that fact of, oh, I feel smaller. Oh, I feel like I'm losing muscle. Oh, I'm not, mm -hmm. who cares? The pursuit right now is, you know, how hyper mobile can I get and how flexible and how much pain can I eliminate? And like, I want to go down that rabbit hole. And the the interesting part is when you trust that process, you stick with it. And then you go back and you revisit the thing maybe you're more passionate about and you love. You're better at it. You're better. I know. Yeah. It ends up serving you. So it's so That's important. the irony, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that everybody under the age of 35 has no idea who Gumby is. I heard you say <laughs> Gumby. <laughs> Gumby was a, see Gumby was a good time. Look him up. Knew, play. knew right away. D yeah, Doug. Doug. Remembers I know the, Gumby. the the song. Did. <laughs> Gumby and Pokey. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Look, if you like Mind Pump, uh, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have free guides that can help you with so many different fitness goals. Again, they cost nothing. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.